Amen. Tonight, I want to speak to you on the blessed way of the righteous. The blessed way of the righteous. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Psalms number 1. Psalms number 1. And you can leave your Bibles open as we meditate on God's Word. We're going to meditate all through this psalm and I believe that there is a message for your heart tonight and you will be strengthened by God's Word and you will understand God's will for your life and I believe that God's Word will transform you by the power of the Holy Spirit and God's Word will make you grow in your faith so that you can continue to live a life that honors and pleases God. When we talk about the book of Psalms, this book, which is the greatest collections of songs, prayers, poetry, and spiritual songs in the whole scriptures, this book is basically a collection of praises to God. There are 150 psalms in this book and they were written in different times in the history of the people of Israel. David is the one that wrote most of the psalms. David, King David, prophet, he is responsible for writing 73 psalms in this book. Asaph is another writer, he wrote 12 psalms in this book. The sons of Korah, they wrote 11 psalms. Heman and Ethan were two musicians in the temple. They wrote two psalms. Also Solomon and Moses, both of them, they, they've written three psalms. And there are extra 49 psalms in this book. They are anonymous. You don't know who wrote it, but we all know they are inspired by the Holy Spirit. What is the purpose of this book? What is the purpose of the book of Psalms? The purpose of this book is to command the people of God to praise Him, to praise God. You know, when we say the word hallelujah, you know what that means? It's a command. It's a command of saying, praise be Yahweh, praise be the God of hosts is a command for the people of God to praise the Lord, to praise God. This book, brothers and sisters, is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's God's holy and precious word. And I can tell you that you will find the encouragement that you need. You will find the guidance that you need. You will find in this book... Also, the prophecies about Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus Christ, His first coming, His second coming, the millennial kingdom, and how God is going to rule and reign in this world. He's going to overcome evil. There's the promises of God for those who are afflicted. There's the promises of God for those who are rejoicing. I can tell you, in 150 Psalms in this book, you will find a prayer, you will find a praise, you will find a song, you will find a word, you will find a direction from the Lord. This book is divided. It's actually a collection of five books. Psalm number one and number two, they are the introduction. And... Psalm 146 to 150 are actually a command of praise, is the conclusion of the book. But the five divisions, book one from number three to number 41, book two to number 42 to 72, book three from 73 to 89, book four from 90 to 106, and book 5 from 107 to 145. And I can tell you that each one of those, there is a message from God to your heart. 
every one of those, every verse, there is a message from the Lord for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, what is the importance for us as Christians? We know the book of Psalms, they were the praises. They became the hymn book of the people of Israel. The praises and worship of the people of God. But what is the importance of the Psalms for the church? And why should we value the book of Psalms? Why should we take the, the Psalms so serious? Why they are so important for me and you? The importance of the book of Psalms, I want to point it out to you. Five reasons why the book of Psalms is so important for us as the people of God today. First of all, the book of Psalms, it is the Word of God. Just that is enough for you to read it. Because it's God's holy and precious Word. It's God's Word. Let's open with me, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy you keep your finger in Psalm number 1. But jump with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Are you with me? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. The Bible says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching. All scripture is inspired by God, breathed out by God, and profitable for teaching, hmm, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God, and when I say the man of God, it's, like, it's talking about man and the women of God, may be complete, equipped for every good work. The church is not guided by the secular culture. The church is not guided by what the news says. The church is not guided. We are not guided. Our worship, our teaching, our praise. We are not guided by the philosophy of this world. By the ideas of this world. No. We are guided by God's holy and precious word. And why the book of Psalms is so important for the church? Because it is inspired word, inerrant word of God. For me and you. It is God's holy and precious word. To feed your spirit and your soul. Hallelujah. All the word of God. Was breathed out by God. Praise be to God. We have holy and precious word. From God. We have his holy and precious word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is God's word. You know. If you think for a moment, people go to college, they study to become a medical doctor. I'll ask you something. Would you trust a doctor that study everything about medicine and his textbooks, everything was from the first century instead of the updated ones that we have today? Would you trust that kind of doctor to treat you? You wouldn't, would you? Why not? Because how science works, how the knowledge of this world works, is always in search of truth. Wants to discover what is the truth about a certain disease. What is the truth about uh, a, a certain pain or problem. But the Word of God, it is the truth of God. It needs no update. The Word of God was truth in the first century, was the truth of God 500 years ago. It is the truth of God today, and it will continue to be the truth of God forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth of God will, Jesus said, look, the world will pass away. Everything will pass away, but my world, my word will stand forevermore. God's word, hallelujah, inerrant, unfailing word, powerful word. We have the word of God. We have the truth of God. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has been revealed to us in the Holy Scriptures. Everything you need for you to attain everlasting life is in this book. There's no update. 
there's no need of it, is all there. Amen. Hallelujah. And the truth of God, 500 years ago, is the same, is the same truth today. The same truth of God a thousand years ago is the same truth today. And praise God that the same God who has inspired the almost 40 authors of the scriptures, the same God who's done that also protected his word throughout the ages. And the archaeologians, they is actually the, the worldly science that confirms this fact is the most credible book that exists in this whole world. Praise be to God for His holy and precious Word. Hallelujah. Why the book of Psalms is so important for the church today? Because it is the Word of God. Hallelujah. Second reason why the book of Psalms is so important for us. Because it speaks about the Christ. It speaks about Jesus Christ. Let's open our Bibles in Luke 24. Gospel of Luke 24. Gospel of Luke 24 verse 44. The Bible says, And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and on the prophets and on the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. Why the book of Psalms is so important for the church today? Because it speaks about the Christ. It speaks about Jesus Christ. Jesus, after his resurrection, he speaks to his disciples and said, Look, um, I want to show you something. Look, all these passages that we are reading here. One of the, my favorite ones is Psalm 22. It speaks about the sufferings of Christ. It speaks about even the nails in his hands. How accurate is that? How powerful is that? The word of God, everything that is written there will be fulfilled. Psalm 24, it speaks about the millennial kingdom, the return of Jesus Christ and how he's going to reign and rule in this earth. Praise be to God. We can find comfort and direction for our lives in God's holy word. The psalm speaks about the Christ. It speaks about the deity of Christ. It speaks about his virginal birth. It speaks about his holy life. It speaks about his death and resurrection, ascension to heaven and his return. Praise be to God for his word. The third reason why the book of Psalms is so important for us, it's because it is God's instruction for His people. God gives us instruction through the book of Psalms. And I want to confirm that in the New Testament. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Let's read on verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in your word or deed, everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will instruct us. God will instruct His people through the book of Psalms. How important it is to us, people of God, to open this holy book and meditate on this. 
God will give us wisdom and instruction. Do you need instructions? Do you need guidance? I can tell you, you will find in the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Fourth reason. Why the book of Psalms is so important. Because it is a way to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. The church needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit upon you, and when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you become an effective witness of Christ in this world. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And one of the ways that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit is by meditating, is by speaking, singing, and praying the book of Psalms. How can that be? Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have no need to get drunk. You know why? Because the full satisfaction is in the joy of the Lord. And I tell you something, is there is no better thing than to be drunk in the Holy Ghost and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit? And I pray that this church comes to this understanding. I pray that the people of God in this church have a desire to be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How can we be filled with the Holy Spirit? Verse 19, addressing one another in Psalms. Hallelujah. You will find that many times when the gift of prophecy is in manifestation, the way that it flows is very much like the book of Psalms. Addressing one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is a church filled with the Holy Spirit. And one of the key things for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit... Is to pray, is to sing, is to worship through the book of Psalms. You got the recipe out there. I'm giving you the recipe. You got the recipe to walk in joy. You got the recipe to walk in the joy of the Lord. To be strengthened in your holy faith. You got the recipe to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Is up to you now. The fifth reason why it is important. The book of Psalms for the church. Because they are commanded by the scriptures to be used in the church's worship. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. The Apostle Paul is dealing here about the gift of tongues and prophecy, how it's supposed to be used in the church. And you see the context of the book of Psalms involved in the spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26. What then, brothers? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue or interpretation. A psalm, let it all be done for the building up of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we come together, everything that we do is for the building up, is for the edification of the church. Hallelujah. 
Now let's go back to Psalm number one. Because we're starting something today very special. By the end of this service, you will understand. I have a holy convocation for this people, for the people of God in this church. While I was meditating and preparing this message, the Holy Spirit spoke in my heart about the importance for this church to meditate on the Word of God through the book of Psalms. Let's open on Psalm number 1. Verse 1 says, Blessed is the man. And the word man here speaks about women as well. Man and women. Blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, the mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. People of God, this was just the introduction. Let me give you the message. The blessed way of the righteous. Psalm number one. What is this psalm? This psalm is a, is a preface of all the book of Psalms. It's an introduction for all the book of Psalms. It contains all the subjects of this book. The main subjects of this book. Through this psalm we are taught the lifestyle of blessedness. The Hebrew words when it says blessed is the man and you see that is very much like Jesus in the Sermon of the Mountain when he starts with the Beatitudes, with the blessings that he's pronouncing. And here the Hebrew word for blessed is actually in plural. It's talking about the many blessings, the way of the blessedness. Through this psalm we are taught people of God the lifestyle of blessedness. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in this lifestyle. I want to walk in this life of blessing. I want to see the blessing of God upon my life, upon my family, upon my ministry. I want to see the blessing of God upon this church. Hallelujah. But also this psalm, psalm number one, speaks about the imminent destruction of the ungodly. This psalm is divided. There are two divisions here. From verse 1 to verse 3, what you will find is the blessed lifestyle of the righteous. The one who has been justified by faith, you will see his lifestyle, how he lives his life. Who is he? How he lives and what the Lord does for him. But from verse 4 till verse 6, you'll see the lifestyle of the ungodly and you will see his destruction. Now let's talk about the righteous way. The Bible says on verse 6 that the Lord knows the way of the righteous. What is the way of the righteous? First, let's understand who is he? Who is this righteous one? And speaking to us as the people of the new covenant, we need to understand that the one who has been justified by faith, he is the one that God is speaking here in this first verse. 
The one who has been born again, the one who was predestined, the one who was called, the one who was justified, the one who was sanctified and glorified. He is the one that God is speaking to. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the one. He is the one that Christ died for. He is the one that is the sheep of the good shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can remember, remind, we remind ourselves from the word of Jesus Christ in John chapter 10 when he speaks about the good shepherd. He says to me and you that I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. I call them by, by their name and I am known by them. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Praise be to God. This is the one that he's speaking of in Psalm number one. This is the one. He is the one that receives eternal life and has the guarantee of Jesus Christ that he will never perish. But the ungodly are not like so. The Bible says that the way of the ungodly shall perish. The way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. But the one who does the will of God endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Who is he? I want to ask you. Who are you? Are you part of the flock of Christ? Are you part of the flock that belongs to the great shepherd of the sheep, the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you received the forgiveness of your sins? If you are here tonight, and if you don't have the certainty and the assurance of salvation in Jesus Christ, I can tell you there is forgiveness of sins available in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And you can receive that by faith. In the Lord Jesus Christ. He has eternal life promised for the one that he speaks of. Remember that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. When are you going to start to believe that you are blessed? In Christ Jesus. When are you actually going to start believing that he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus? Hmm. Who is this man? He is the one that has been justified by faith. He is the one that has received the gift of eternal life. But this psalm doesn't speak only about who is this man. This psalm speaks also about what he does. It talks about his lifestyle. And now he's, he's not speaking off just on the fact of you being the righteous one. Because you are righteous today because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Because of what Jesus has done for you. But this psalm speaks about the lifestyle of the righteous. It speaks about the lifestyle that I am and you are called to live. What kind of lifestyle are we as people of God called to live? What kind of lifestyle God wants you to live? We need to think about this. What he does. The righteous men and women. The Bible says on verse 1. The blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the table in the seat of the mockers. The righteous one in his lifestyle. He does not walk in the counsel of unbelievers. Let me tell you something. You know that friend of yours or relative 
who's not a Christian, who doesn't know the Word of God, He has no wisdom to impart to you. You like it or not, this is the truth. He has no wisdom to impart to you. He has no counsel to, to give to you. Do you want to walk in a blessed lifestyle? You stay away from that kind of counsel. Are you with me? Do you still love me? Come on. Do you want to walk in the path of blessing? You stay away from that kind of advice. The person has no wisdom from God. They don't know the word of God. They don't walk according to the word of God. But they want to give you their opinion. They want to come and say to you, oh, let me give you an advice. You know what? Don't listen to that kind of advice. It has nothing to give to you. If someone comes to me and wants to give me that advice, and that advice is not according to the word of God, I'm not going to listen to it. I have no reason to listen to. Because I want to walk in the way of the blessing. I want to see the blessing of God in my life. I want to see the blessing of God in my family. And the righteous way, the way of the righteous, is to stay away from the counsel of unbelievers. Stay away from the counsel of the ungodly. When it comes to your life, how should you live your life? Go to the Word of God. When it comes to your marriage, what does the Bible speak about your marriage? You go to the Word of God. You open the holy book and you listen to what God says in His words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> you still love me. You better do because I'm speaking the word of God here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hmm. You want the recipe of failure and ruin in your life? Start listening to someone else's advice. That is not founded in the scriptures. Start listening to that. Even people who are Christians. But if they, if they don't walk according to the word. If they don't live according to the word of God. They have no counsel to impart to you. What does God speak about your children? What does God speak about your life? What does God speak about your finances? What does God speak about your relationships? What does God speak about your marriage? You better listen to the Word of God and open the Word of God and meditate on the Word of God. Then you will find the guidance that you need. He does not walk in the counsel of unbelievers. This blessed man, this blessed woman, they stay away from the counsel of the ungodly. But also, he does not imitate their lifestyle. And we as the people of God, we are called to imitate Christ. He's our role model. He's the one that we should look for. We cannot live like the world, people of God. We cannot speak like the world. Your profanity in your tongue, that has to disappear. It has to disappear, that kind of lifestyle that is against God's word. And you know what? If you continue listening to the counsel of the ungodly, you're going to start imitating their lifestyle. You're going to start living like them. And the Bible says... That the way of the ungodly shall perish. You're going to perish with them even if you're righteous. Even if you're a children of God. Even if you're a Christian. Even if you're a member of this church. If you don't walk according to God's word. But instead listen to the counsel of the ungodly. You're following their path. You're following their way. And you will perish alongside with them. We are not called to dress like the world. We are not called to live like the world, to speak like the world, to think like the world. We are called to listen and to follow God's holy and precious word. That's what it is. It is what it is. And this man and women of God, he does not have fellowship. With the mockers. 
verse 1, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Who are your friends? Who are the people you hang out with? Who are the people that you share your life with? We are called to stay away from the table of the scornful, of the mockers, of those who have no respect of God, those who have no fear of God, who open their mouth for debauchery, who open their mouth to speak evil things against God's word, against God's servants. Do you want to walk in the way of the blessing? You stay away from that. You want to see the blessing of God in your life, in your family, in your marriage, in your whole life. Don't sit on that table. Don't hang out with that. I tell you, once you become a Christian, once you become born again, your lifestyle changes. The Word of God now will renew your mind, your way of thinking. And if you have any contact with them, it is to share God's Word. It is to influence them towards the lifestyle, the way of blessing that is described to us in this psalm. We see here in this psalm, who is this man? Who is this woman? What does he do? What does she do? It talks about her lifestyle. But I tell you something, it is not enough not to listen to the counsel of unbelievers. It is not enough not to imitate their lifestyle. It is not enough not to have fellowship with the mockers, with the scornful. But the Bible tells us that this man, this woman of God, what do they do? Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. It's not just staying away from the ungodly influence, but it's going towards the word of God. And now we're talking about having pleasure in the Word of God. And people of God, we need to repent. We need to repent of living a lifestyle when we find more pleasure sitting two or three hours in front of a television watching a film than having time on God's Word. We need to repent of spending hours listening to worldly music and enjoying that. There's nothing against if, if, if it's not, if you're not listening to profanity, there's no problem for you to listen to good music. But let me tell you something. Our delight must be in the presence of God. Our delight must be in God's Word. This man, this woman, his delight, his pleasure is to meditate on the Word of God. And because he loves that, he does that day and night. What's the most valuable thing you have in your life? It's your time. Something you cannot buy. And it's something that you don't know how much time do you have left. That's the most valuable thing you have. And we will be accountable on that great day. Of what did we do with our time? There's no time. There, there's no problem for you to have time. For you to entertain yourself. For you to have a good time with your friends, with your family. There's no problem with that. What I'm talking here is about priorities. My priority, my delight, my pleasure is in the law of the Lord. And it is word I meditate day and night. That is the way of the blessing. Do you want to walk in the blessing of God? Start meditating until the Word of God becomes your greatest pleasure. Hallelujah. 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 His pleasure is in the presence of God and He meditates on God's Word day and night. And when we talk about meditation, there's a great man of God in the 17th century, great preacher, Richard, Richard Baxter, great man of God. 
He went through a, such a difficult time. He was sick and he was not expecting to recover. And during that time, he claims that he learned what it meant to meditate on God's Word. And this is Richard Baxter's uh, definition of meditation. He says that meditation is fixing your mind in a particular truth and speaking to yourself, to your own heart about it until God comes near and you sense His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You put your focus on one truth and you speak to yourself, Jonatus, you see, this is the way. This is the way of the blessing. Stay away from the counsel of the ungodly. Do not stand in the path of sinners, Jonatus. Do not sit in the, in the table of the scornful. Have your delight in the law of the Lord and the word of the Lord. Jonathan, meditate on it day and night. This is meditation. Hallelujah. You read the word, you put your mind into that truth and you speak to yourself. He meditates day and night. Why? Because he values the word. Because the word is precious for him. Hmm. That's why also the Psalms says that there is no better place than to be in the house of the Lord because he finds pleasure in listening the word of God. He finds pleasure on reading the word of God. He finds pleasure on praying the word of God, on singing the word of God. His delight is in the word of the Lord and he meditates on it day and night. He's talking about a lifestyle. Do we really want to make a difference in this place? Do we really want to fulfill the mission that God has called us to? People of God, we need to understand that this is a lifestyle. This is not something that you do when you come to church on Sunday. It has to become your pleasure, the word of the Lord. And what does he receive from God? What is the promise of God for this man, for this woman? He will flourish like a tree. And we are now in this amazing season that we are seeing. The plants, the trees, everything flourishing. That is the promise of God for you who meditate on God's Word. He will flourish like a tree. He's talking about your spiritual growth. You will grow spiritually. This person who meditates on God's word, who stays away from the counsel of evil, who stays away from the path of the ungodly, this man who has the pleasure in God's word, the Bible guarantees, promises that he will flourish like a tree that is close to a river of waters. He has no lack. Everything is there available for him. The direction he needs, the guidance he needs, the strength he needs, I tell you, he is planted like a tree close to that place, that river of waters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to grow spiritually and you're going to be fruitful. People are going, others will be blessed through this man's life. Others will be blessed through your life, through your testimony. Through what God is going to do in your life, you're going to bear fruit and others will benefit from that fruit. And the Bible guarantees that whatever he does will prosper. Why is he going to prosper? Because whatever he does is according to God's will. It's according to God's word. And he is blessed and he will be blessed. And what about the ungodly? The ungodly, he's like a dead plant. And the Bible says that he, he is driven away by the wind. He has no direction. He doesn't know what to do, where to go, what to say. He is led by the influences out there. The interesting thing is, verse 5, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, 
nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The ungodly won't stay in the church. It doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. They won't stand in the judgment. And the Bible says that whatever he does, his way will perish. My conclusion to this is, people of God, what is the way of blessing? Is knowing God's word and serving his kingdom. This is the way of blessing, is to know the will of God and serve his kingdom while we're still here on this earth. This is a true blessed life. I have seen blessed people who didn't have much money and, I had, and I've seen people who are ungodly and had much. The blessing is not measured about how much money you have in your bank. The blessing, your blessed lifestyle is measured of how much you know and put in practice of God's Word. That's how we can measure if you have a blessed life. Knowing God and knowing His Word, serving His kingdom. What is the way of the blessing? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father except through me. Do you want to walk in the way of blessing? We will walk in the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to live this lifestyle. I am commanded by God to not listen to the ungodly, to not stand in the path of sinners. I am commanded by God not to sit on that table in the seat of the scornful, the mockers. But now I am called to have my delight, my pleasure in the law of the Lord and to meditate on it day and night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I have the amazing promises of God to me that he shall be like a tree. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth the fruit in season. At the right time, he flourishes. At the right time, there's the fruit. People can come for help, and he has a way to help. He has a word to help. He has fruit to give for those who are hungry. Because this man is blessed, he is planted in the right place. Hallelujah. 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 He brings forth his fruit in season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Even the appearance of the righteous is better. His smile, everything, his life, there is a light in his face. It is the light of Christ. Praise be to God. And whatever he does, whatever he does shall prosper. I can tell you something. Whatever this church will do according to God's holy and precious word will prosper. I have the guarantee we are going to prosper. Amen. And if you tonight understand what God is expecting from us as his righteous people, if tonight you repent of staying in the seat of the scornful and the mockers, if tonight you decide not to stand anymore in the path of sinners. If tonight you decide not to listen to the counsel of the ungodly, but you say, Lord, I repent from the time that I have wasted and I come to you. Lord, my pleasure has to be in your word. And I want my pleasure and my delight to be in your law. I can tell you something. You will flourish like a tree. You will flourish like a tree planted alongside the rivers. You will be fruitful in the right time. And whatever you do will prosper. This is God's promise to us. This is the way of the righteous. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Amen.
Praise be to God.